This is Bupyeong Kantong Shijang. I originally thought that Bupyeong and Kantong were two separate markets, but this sign behind us actually has both of the names together, so I'm gonna assume it's the same thing. The night market opens at 6.30, but it pretty much runs through from the daytime market. Let's give it a go! Bupyeong Kantong Market is the same market. Originally Bupyeong Market, the addition of Kantong, cans, came to be when refugees began selling various canned goods brought in by American troops. Gukje Shijang International Market lies right across the road to Bupyeong Kangtong Market. With connecting alleyways and its close proximity, it's hard to tell where one market ends and the other one begins. The first thing we got was Bindetao, which is mung bean pancake. This place is really, really busy, so we decided to sit down because we saw an opportunity. There are different flavors. There's either meat, seafood, or oyster. And we got the seafood one. I'll try the seafood one. Let's go. Mm. If you think of it like a hash brown, it's not the worst explanation, a hash brown. I thought it was going to be really mushy because the texture is quite thick, but the outside is super crispy and the inside is tender and fluffy. A little soft like mashed potatoes, but not quite so starchy. It's a really deep, earthy flavor. I like it more than I expected. It's better if you get it cooked fresh, definitely. It seems like they don't season it before they cook it. So recommend to dip it into the sauce, which I think is a mix of vinegar and soy sauce. There's a bit of peppers in there too, so it's a little spicy, a little salty, a bit sour. There's zucchini and carrots in there and other vegetables, so it gives it some texture and some flavor as well. It makes it lighter, I think. Mm. There it is. with butter and the fire grilling. So I have some pretty high expectations. Let's give it a go. Mm. The texture is a lot softer than I thought. It's almost like a sturdy mushroom. We've had abalone before and it's really, really tough if you don't cook it properly. So this is surprising to me. Mm. They don't actually season it. It's really easy to taste the fire flavor when they blow towards it. It comes with a vinegared red pepper salt which I think matches it quite well, but maybe a little strong for a light purple taste. It's served with a side of vegetables, which they top off with mayonnaise and maybe barbecue sauce. Stir fried alongside the jumbo. It's really tasty. They have tasters of the squid. Mm. It breaks apart really easily. Mm. It's crispy. It's really savory. The free sample is such a good idea because it's so freaking good, this fried squid. But we decided to get a whole portion because we had so many samples. <laughs> Mm. It's super meaty because it's so thin. It's more like um, a satisfying like chew of like dried fish rather than chewy chewy squid. It's so good. Uh, it sounds really good. They cup it up with injolmi, not um, not sugar. Ah. Mm. Busan style hot dog is definitely the best. Crispy, it's chewy. The seeds make a really nice crunch. And it's not as sweet because they don't put as much sugar in it. The nuttiness is really good too. Mm. The addition of the injolmi is really nice. Adding the roasted soybeans brings out even more of the nuttiness. <laughs> Time to end with the dessert. We got ourselves a double huang cheese macaron. I don't know what huang means, but it's a cheese macaron. Let's go. It's cold. <laughs> oh, that's real cheese. The inside cream is hard. The inside is a buttercream mixed with a um, powdered sweet cheese flavor. I don't like it. I think it's one of those buttercreams that's best to leave out at room temperature for a few minutes before you eat it. So I like sweet cheese. <laughs> it's a pretty good background, I'd say. A bit pricey, but it's quite large. I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm a bit mad. I'm very full. The cheese background made me unreasonably happy. <laughs>
That was a night market. Unlike any night market we've been to, I think. Even though it's really tight, the atmosphere is really great. There's a mix of both Korean and international food, so whatever you want, you'll probably find something in there. Mm. Definitely give this one a go if you're here for at least one evening in Busan. We'll see you next time. We're back here in Bukyong Kangtong Market, this time for breakfast. We're here at a dumpling place. This is right outside Bukyong and Kangtong Market. It's a store with huge steamers on the outside and it's always billowing steam. We got the half half meat and kimchi. Let's try it. I have the meat one, I have the kimchi one. Mm. The skin is so thin. It's not chewy at all. It's more like a wonton wrapper than a dumpling wrapper in that you can bite it off really easily. It seems like inside there are spring onions, mints, and maybe eggs. Mm. It's really surprising, but the spring onions are only about half cooked. It's still crunchy and quite fresh, actually. My one is the same, only it's got kimchi as well. And I actually really like the combination of the slightly sour and slightly spicy flavor that the kimchi brings to. It comes with a sauce. Seems like a vinegar of soy sauce. Let's try it. I think they might put some chili in there, but it's not spicy. It's definitely vinegar, soy sauce, and other things. But it's a little bit sour and sugar, which goes well with the, the mandu. Mm. But overall, it's a really good mm. balance of all the flavors. Tasty. We're here at something that looks like a pancake place. Honestly, couldn't tell you. But it seems like it's pancakes made of different types of flour. It seems like they fill it with red beans. You get three pieces for 2,000 won. But in this case, the lady was really nice enough to give us a fourth piece for free. Crunchy on the outside, even if it's been sitting there for a while. Mm. It's a little bit greasy. Actually, it's quite greasy. It's kind of chewy and soft in a way that not quite mochi, not quite a um, wheat flour mm. is. It's quite fragrant. It's a little doughy. It's not predominantly sweet, even though I think it aims for a very mild sweet. Mm. The red bean is a little bit sweetened, but it's also a little bit chunky compared to other red bean in Korea, which tends to be completely smooth. So I actually really like this one. You can taste the, the flavor of the beans more. This one's dark in color. <coughs> we have no idea what it is. Mm. It's super crispy. The skin is a bit salted this time, so you get a little play on the sweet and the salty. There's a fragrance in it which isn't in the yellow one. It tastes a lot more savory. Mm. The last one is a white one here. This mm. one she just pulled off the grill so it's super crunchy. That one's definitely a rice. Mm. Rice dumpling. It's the most familiar flavor. They're all really good. I couldn't tell you which one is my favorite. They have different aspects which make them really good. It surprised me I think these dumplings. Mm. They're really good. There's quite a few red bean porridge places in this little section but we chose this one because for some reason it seems way more popular than the others. We're here having dang patjuk which is a sweet red bean porridge and we ordered it and they actually gave us I think it's shikke instead of water to drink. Shikke is a rice drink, sweet Korean rice drink. Let's try the shikke. It tastes a little bit like Corn, like high fructose corn syrup. Looks like they top it off with injolmi, um, like the rice cakes with the roasted soybean powder on it. It's really warm, so let's give it a go. Mm. It's not as sweet as I expected. In fact, it's very, very faint. You get the red bean flavor, obviously. It's very thick, very warm, a bit chunky, but it's almost a little bit savory in a way that I can't describe. Rice cake is actually a little bit salted, so it makes the red bean soup taste a little sweeter. That's really good. That's actually really, really good. Mm. I like that it's chunky. They put whole red beans amongst the blended red beans. The injol meat rice cake on top adds nuttiness. It's not sweetened. It just gives it a bit of texture. I wasn't expecting too much, but I actually enjoy this a lot. If it's not sweet enough, they do serve sugar on the side, but I think this is honestly perfect the way it is. Everything we had today was good, but we haven't tried everything because you still have to try the noodles here. So we're gonna try that tomorrow. It's our last day and we're eating noodles. Something that you kind of have to get. This place 
like most of the noodle places in the market, have a range of other options as well as the noodles, such as tteokbokki, Korean pancakes, fried foods, and dumplings. We got one cold noodle, one hot soup noodle, one fish cake, and one tofu pocket. Let's see how it goes. I got myself janchi guksu, which is hot soup noodles. It seems like quite a simple dish. There's some flour noodles, shredded fish cakes, and chives, and some kimchi on top. Let's try the soup first. It's mostly flavored by the kimchi, quite sour, just a tiny bit spicy, and nicely salted. It's very simple flavors. If you know what kimchi tastes like, I'm surprised at how incredibly soft the noodles are. They're not mushy. They give away as soon as you pretty much touch it. It's quite a surprise if you're looking for chewy noodles. I like the chives are crispy. It looks like they just blanch the chives before they serve it. So it's still nice and crispy, very fragrant, herby flavor. The fish cake is nice and chewy, a little bit sweet. It's just there for texture. Overall, very simple flavors. So I got the bibing pang yum. It looks like it's got glass noodles, some fish cakes, cut and choose chips, some chives, looks like some pickled vegetables, and then all topped with the bibim sauce, which is like a mixed spicy sweet sauce. It's really good. I thought it'd be cold, but instead this one is warm. It's a little sweet, a little bit of the gochujang flavor. The pickled vegetables add a nice crunch and sweetness to it. So I think it accompanies this sweet, savory, slightly vinegary sauce well. I like the chives, but they get caught in my teeth. I've got the omok as well. It's a Busan style, which means it's a little bit thicker than the normal one, so let's give it a go. I think the normal one has a little bit more of the texture of like a tofu pocket, whereas this one you can feel the texture of the fish cake more. It's actually not very fishy in flavor, maybe because it's been sitting in the soup for so long. Otherwise, I mean, it's not too strange. It's delicious. I've got myself one of these gigantic tofu pockets and it's stuffed with something. Usually noodles, I think? I'm not quite sure. I'll give it a go. Glass noodles filled in a tofu pocket. It's very hot. Honestly, nothing too special to me about it, but I mean, why not give it a go? That was a little underwhelming. Although the flavor is simple, there was nothing that really stood out. I actually like the, the tofu pocket. Either case, these noodles are a must try, so if you can find a stall, maybe you'll have a better experience. Anyway, as to where you can find this place, you can look to our website, which will be linked in the description below. As to where we are now, follow us on Instagram at TwinSpeakEatGo. That has been our Bukyong Kantong Market ET Tour. Yeah.